And let's bring in our political insiders, Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor, joining us from the beautiful Charleston, South Carolina via satellite. Look at those boats behind you. Mm -hmm. And John LeBoutlier, no boats, uh, a former Republican congressman for New York, Doug Schoen, also no boats, <laughs> former pollster for President Bill Clinton and Fox News contributor as well. Gentlemen, good to see you good all. To see you, Doug doesn't good. have a boat, he has a yacht. Exactly. Oh, well, you know what, exactly. that's, that's how Doug rolls. Well, you exactly. Know, I, I'm going to ask you then to uh, spend some of your cash on this. I will. Can you explain to me where this story goes now? Because no one that among you gentlemen thought that Shinseki leaving would be that big of a deal in terms of solving the problem. It, it isn't a big deal in terms of solving the problem and with the further uh, reports of systemic abuses, cover-ups of uh, uh, delayed appointments, the tragic death of at least 30, 40 people, we need to figure out A, what happened and B, most important, and it's something John spoke over the last couple of weeks, come up with a system to get the veterans who've given so much to their country the health care they need expeditiously and efficiently, and that's just not happening now, and that's the real crisis. John? In 2000, the General Accounting Office uh, looked at the VA, right? Found the exact thing was going on back then that Shinseki's paying for now, which is huge delays, on average 190 days for a veteran to see a doctor. Nothing's changed in 15 years. We've had four different people run the VA. Same thing happens. Mm. Nothing's gonna change unless the media really digs into this thing. Day after day surfaces story after story of abuse of veterans who've suffered or died and that will drive Congress. I think Doug and Pat would agree. They react to what's in the news. If the news keeps the story going, they will then have to address it. They are hoping Shinseki being gone makes the story go away. You know what's interesting, Pat? Uh, it, we've heard calls for the story and, and keeping it on the front page, obviously, with Shinseki at the center of it, but that really isn't what's important at all. It's providing for our vets. So now, does the focus in Washington change to get that done? I mean, from what I'm hearing John say, it doesn't sound very promising. It doesn't. I, I, and I'm concerned because, you know, the Washington game in the political class is simple. We get rid of Shinseki, we got rid of somebody, now let's move on to other things. What is at stake that I talked about last week is a government that where the bureaucracy apparently is more interested in taking care of itself and ensconcing its own privileges than it is in serving the people, including the vets, and getting their bonuses even while veterans die. So. I think there's a serious problem here about whether or not Washington cares the way the people outside the country. When John said, by gosh, let's hope the media does its job, so far, and you know, well, that's what we have to hope for because that will make the congressman do it. They should be up all night, all day doing something. They should have been doing it for 15 years. Let me add on to that. Uh, on Thursday, John McCain had a press conference asking for the Department of Justice to intervene in this thing and look and see if criminal activity is taking place. And with deaths occurring, it could be criminal, obviously. But here's the thing. He is the senior senator from Arizona, where this center that is focused uh, on right. is. And are you telling me that over the last five, ten years, these veterans who are his constituents, as they wait and wait and wait and never get to see a doctor, they're not calling his office up. They're not going to his Phoenix office. And he acts like he's never heard about this thing. It's like the guy in Casablanca saying, well, I'm shocked, shocked that there's gambling here. McCain, I'm shocked that there are delays in the VA. Well, in He's fact, a former POW. He ought to know that the veterans get short shrift. Jeff Excuse Miller me. out of Florida was asked the very same question. How could members of Congress not have known about this? Let's watch his response and then we'll chat. Well, interestingly enough, many of those reports were instigated by the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. And when we went to the VA to ask if the recommendations, in fact, were going to be followed up on, they said yes. And then when we asked them about their numbers, they lied to Congress in regards to their numbers. But it's very difficult for me to believe that the central office here in Washington, D.C., did not have any idea about the cooking of the book and the illegal activity basically that was going on at now under their own admission 60 percent of their facility 
so what Miller is saying too is that that the, there was such a long history of lies about what was going on. <laughs> the IG reports, that's the inspectors general inside the VA. Those reports apparently were not made available to Congress. I, I'll give him that. The GAO report that I mentioned from 2000, mm -hmm. that is done at the behest and for Congress. They had that report. They did nothing about it. And Doug? this now though is going to be a problem on President Obama's watch. Okay, so that brings me to my next question, because right. you've gotten rid of Shinseki. Right. And I want to talk about how he exited, too, but we'll get to that right. in a moment. That's kind of the face of this scandal. Right. So what does that mean for the president politically? Here's the thing. The Benghazi uh, scandal, if it be a scandal, is something that we're going to have a congressional hearing on. We have the IRS. We have the uh, NSA. Those are while they're serious and, and important scandals, they don't touch every American directly in the way that the VA does, because everybody knows or has in their family or is, in fact, themselves a veteran. This is going to be a political issue for the president. He has to produce real results quickly, otherwise it will hurt right. him in November. Pat, I want to talk yeah, to you about I this, yeah. if, I, yeah. if I could. I brought up this question last week when this was all just breaking. Why didn't the president just fire Shinseki? And there really is more to this than just semantics, because Shinseki now, the general, gets to keep his golden parachute. There's a completely different optic when the president fires somebody for something that happened on their watch and when they wait patiently at the House for that person to show up and have a conversation and hand in the resignation. Look, it's all part of the same, you know, the same minuet that takes place. Shinseki was going. Uh, Jay Carney had cut him off the day before. He went in there. He didn't want to go. The president wanted him to go. They didn't fire him because they, they, they didn't, again, want to inflame people who support Sinsecki since he was a war hero. But I need to go back to Doug's point about the politics and the question you asked, Harris, which is very important. No one has discussed what the implications of the VA will be six months from now if, if the opposition to Obama, if the Republicans, manage to equate the, the VA scandal, this is just veterans, with what a federal takeover of the health care system means for all Americans. I would think that there's a narrative there that if I were Democrats, and I am a Democrat, but if I were a Democratic candidate, I would be terrified of, which is if the government does this to veterans, what do you think they're going to do to you on Obamacare, something that's ten times bigger? Hmm. And so far, no one has gotten there yet. That, but I think for political insiders, that's what we need that, to look that at. That one is huge. And the narrative that the administration is incompetent and that the passion differential, which we talk about, mm -hmm. who's more PO devoted in November? Right. Our side, the Republican conservative side, is more ginned up. And this feeds into it, which is yeah. this administration doesn't care about the veterans. I, I want to get in a couple of tweets. Sure. Uh, and you, you touched on this one from Jack Corrigan, who says, to fix the VA problems, first step is to get rid of the unions. Uh, and then uh, Mr. B. Crusher, and this is the one that I was pointing to, how does the VA scandal affect the 2014 midterm yeah. election? The key word to me is incompetence and government malfeasance and overreaching. If the Republicans can develop the narrative of a presidency and a president who is failing internationally, failing domestically, they have a chance to run the table. But that is the real challenge. Pat and John are putting their fingers on it. Uh, real quickly, Sloan Gibson, who is the deputy secretary at the VA now, has stepped up to become the interim person. I think he's had like three or four months uh, experience on the job. And, and no disrespect to him, but listen to this. Bobby Kay on Twitter writes, send in the Marine, former Senator Jim Webb. He'll kick some butt, and I'm quoting, and take a few names and move it towards getting fixed. Here's the thing. This problem yeah. is not just a management problem. It is a system problem, which is we're having more veterans come out of Afghanistan and Iraq, go into the VA system with less money to take care of them. And more serious problems, John. And, uh, uh, totally. I mean, the PTSD more thing, and, I mean, my brain injuries, the whole right. thing. So we, we, it's, it's not, man you could put Vince Lombardi in charge of this place. It cannot be made to run better. We need to change the system, privatize it like we've talked and about. And we're hearing some calls I for privatization. I think John's solution, I'm sorry. Go, Go ahead, ahead Pat. I want to hear this, Pat. Go ahead. I, I think John's solution that he offered a couple of weeks ago that lit up the Internet and so forth is a kind of out-of-the-box solution 
that we really want. The problem is for government to admit that it's incompetent and it's failing, which it is everywhere, is to put in danger the people who benefit from government, which is the political class, Washington, D.C., the politicians, and everyone else. But I think Doug's put his finger on it. The issue is not just the VA. The issue is not just Obamacare. It is the idea that government is not competent enough. It reaches, it tries to do too much, and we need to do something about getting, changing the system. John's proposal, I would love to hear someone campaign on. I bet you it would light uh, voters up. All right, let's remind everybody what John LeBoutlier called for is to give all of our vets the same care as congressional members have, uh, to elevate the standard, if you will, and make it equal. Now, listen to, to this. Abolish the VA while you do it. Abolish the VA yeah. while you do it. That's yeah. what you, John Gate writes to me on Twitter, VA, instant fix, colon, force Congress to use the VA medical system. Boy, uh, you guys on Twitter are really, really active. I have to read this. James says, I called the VA on Thursday for a routine dental checkup. I have to wait until August 15th. All other dentists are the next day. We were talking quickly about privatization. Uh, and then there's this, because somebody had suggested Senator Webb to run the VA. Uh, Independent 2 says, I think Webb is a good idea to run the VA. And then John said during the commercial. He has talked about running for president in 2016. And Pat said. I think he'd be perfect. As John has said, he was once a Reagan Republican. He got tired of, he didn't like the neocons, became a Democrat, did not like the corruption of our own, of Doug and my party. And I think he would be great. I think he should run as an independent. He is a, that's a true American hero. And the country is tired of the way this stuff works. I think he'd be great at the VA. I even think if he's, good, if he's thinking of running, that's even more exciting. You know what's interesting? That was what we call a little catch-up on yeah. what happened during the commercial thing right there. And our crew was so quick, they got a picture of Senator Webb up. Doug, real quickly, your thought. Yeah, I think that if President Obama had good sense and good judgment, he would seriously consider this. And also, given the fact that he knows he couldn't control Senator Webb mm -hmm. personally, politically, or substantively, the chance that he gets appointed is about zero. Interesting. Let's <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Bo Bergdahl, who's on his way home now after being captive by the Taliban in Afghanistan for nearly five years. Uh, the conversation has quickly changed from him coming home to asking some very serious questions uh, about what happens when you make a deal the way the White House made a deal to get this guy. And this is no disparaging look at him coming home. It's more about what we had to do to get that. Let's have Senator McCain and then we'll talk. Uh, All right, they're gonna load that real quickly. Can I, I wanna say something. Yesterday in the Rose Garden, when the president spoke with the Bergdahl parents, he said, we don't leave prisoners of war behind. And I don't blame Barack Obama for what went on years ago, but just because it needs to be said, we did leave hundreds of American prisoners of war alive, held against their will in captivity in Vietnam and Laos, and I believe hundreds are still there held against their will. It needs to be said. Now, on Bergdahl, we're all happy we got him back. Politically, I'm a little cynical about the timing of it. He could have done this exact deal two years ago. The deal was discussed. People in Washington knew it. The same five Taliban guys. Why now? Why the day after Shinseki is gone, do we suddenly... Why do you think? Well, I think it could be a change of narrative by the White House. Take Friday, which is always the day for the bad news. Dump Shinseki. This could backfire on the White House, though. Here's well, why. It, Let's watch McCain. There was discussions that I heard way back as far uh, back as two years ago to release these people. There was a uh, bipartisan opposition to that. Um, and but obviously what's done is done. All right. And when I say backfire, I don't mean in any type of way. And we mm. want to make it very clear anything to do with Bergdahl coming mm. home is, is a blessing for him uh, and his family. Uh, Last yeah. POW out of Afghanistan, of course, yeah. of course, of course. But the price, who are these guys? You know, these are some of the worst human beings that we know. High ranking Taliban officials, high ranking Al Qaeda officials, close to Mullah Omar, communications, intelligence, defense ministers. These are horrific people. And while we celebrate uh, 
Bergdahl's release, mm -hmm. we have to wonder about the precedent that set of not consulting Congress within the 30 days that the administration should have and what it says about what we will do in the future and what it puts Americans at risk, how it puts us at risk. Well, and what others have yeah. talked about in national intelligence, though, is that it, you could torture Americans to try to get your prisoners free. Correct. I mean, that's that's really the precedent Correct. that is well. potentially here. Now, they said that Bergdahl's health was hinging and that they needed to move in. Uh, gentlemen, this idea that Bo Bergdahl, Sergeant Army Sergeant, has come home, huge celebration, so glad to get him back. POW, the last one American in Afghanistan. Pat, this is a tender issue for Republicans and other critics of the administration to take on. But your point with being critical about the deal that was made to bring Bergdahl home is what? Well, it is this. First of all, let's understand we're all excited. This Bergdahl has been through hell five years in, in possession. I'm glad he's home. We're all our family, for his family and him. But look, look, we got to deal with the fact that Secretary of Defense Panetta refused to make this deal several years ago because we're talking about the defense minister of the Taliban, the chief of staff of their military for armed forces. We're letting them go and setting a precedent, as Doug said. But here's the question. How many American casualties were incurred capturing these very top people and then just letting mm -hmm. them go? And why did we do then now what we would not do then? And then I'm sorry, you have to ask yourself, as John has laid out the timeline here, and as the Hill, the Hill paper said just this afternoon in a news alert, this is all an effort to divert attention and to get the narrative away from the VA. And by the way, you have to ask the question, well, come, why are we making these kinds of deals now? Real quickly, Doug, your response to that, because that's a lot of fire thrown in the room at the administration. I go back to where I started. This goes to the question of the competence of the administration to manage international affairs and domestic affairs. How are we making decisions? Why are we making decisions? What is our long-term strategy? How do we revitalize a country that is not succeeding economically or internationally? This is why hashtag bottom line is right next to your name on Twitter, Good. right? That's the name you get of right yacht count. that we exactly. talked oh, really? Are you kidding? Yeah. I'm about to go to my yacht now. Oh my yeah. goodness, I never knew that. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here and for you, Pat, for joining us via satellite. Right. And you can catch these gentlemen on foxnews.com every Monday morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. And now, Huckabee.